bring up information and it's that culture is very much horrible in any circumstances and we shun upon it to the very least but we also have to tell you that when it comes to a certain situation where this person suffers so much of blood cause trauma the doctor then has to do a stance about this that's what the debate actually is second speaker doctors will also have the ability to listen to what these patients want to tell you at the end of the day and you should not listen to the government's orders first know what your patient wants so yeah even if this even if this victims of interrogation we them, then we don't see why it's fine for doctors also not these people treatment you choose to die so the very fact moments we didn't tell it to diffuse blood transfusions also recognize the very fact that they think it's time for them to die because God calls upon them but also in that other motion that tells you to deny CPK I already understand that some people think it's about them that they will say that but when it comes to the point you know, that you have to talk about the medical post we think that it is always the duty of that, of that doctor to do so sure. So let's talk about medical support, right? When medical doctors within the medical field take certain goals, it means that many of the duty is not more stable than the staff. The very fact that they go on to be this part, it was an army to the medical doctor for the X faction. I don't think you have an ally person. I still have a stable person who was from America and the South because it was your duty during World War II to then do so. Because understand that you are not the infantry. But someone who has to treat the life person means one thing that you do that medical work for a certain area for a certain cause, a certain understanding is up that you have to save the life and we do not wish for you to become a hypocrite. But it's a difficult topic. What are the names of these babies? This, right? We, we should not homogenize doctors who are forced to not treat this way. We wish not homogenize. All the Pakistani people and all the Afghanistan people who are watching it in one time away in this up. But why? Because when these people will be taken the file itself, the asset shows you that the US is willing to fall for the very fact that people will not put into trial when it comes to first. Why is it important for us to stabilize and preserve them first? So all these people who are they may be innocent and you're detained without a trial itself, still have this hope within you that you used to get treatment because one day you will be acquitted or be found within a certain life space. Secondly, even if this person is to be found in this sphere, why is it not to kill them to save their lives? Because at the end of the day, we think that compassion and effort is a stance that has to take. The very fact that if I save a Pakistani person, a Gangali or an Afghanistan person, and they go back to the home country, that mess is so bad that they aren't really that we should die just because we will help without attention. And it's, a, and it's a sad truth that happens to the speaker. Afghanistan people are that detained law within the Hanago Bay because the US have homogenized you to become a terrorist. We think that these people deserve attention and they need. Deserve the attention, deserve the doctor, they deserve the compassion that we can bring towards you. I'm very proud of those handouts. The opposition operates under the paradigm that some of the victims of interrogation do want to live. And of course, that is the fact. But how about those that don't want to live? Because the reality of the situation in the in the, in the interrogation of the reality that victims of interrogation face at Kata Bay, some of them don't want to live anymore. And some of them want to die because they want the torture back. They are subject to sleep deprivation. They are subject to execution. They are subject to sensory deprivation. Now, these are people that want to die. And the opposition tries to push forward that these people have a choice to life for them. But we say otherwise, right? These people will die for the space. These people will live whether they want to or not. The reality is, these people, a lot of them, would like their suffering to end. 
and are forced to carry on living so that they can be taught even more. So they are battling for the well-being of these people. We talk about, first my battles, we talk about compassionate default. Now, in this situation, where you know saving a person's life will result in him being held for an infinite amount of time and being subject to even more torture, you know for a fact that this person is not going to enjoy his life because you don't know how long he's going to be taken. He'll be electrocuted, he will be beaten, he will be absent, he will not be left to sleep. Now, knowing all of that, which is actually the most compassionate to like the person suffering and or forcefully bringing him back to life so that he can continue suffering. Now, that's the compassion. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Doctors are saving people. You see, the concept of a doctor, the Hippocratic oath in itself, is to do no harm. Now, what if when you say someone, you will harm further? Because doctors are all about kindness, all about preserving life, they're all about saving people. Now, a doctor not only prioritizes saving a person, but a doctor also prioritizes quality of life. That's why things like euthanasia exist. Yes, yes. Because sometimes doctors have to concede that they cannot ensure quality of life by saving a person. And the best a person can end his life with dignity is through euthanasia. But before I move on. What makes you think that after knowing all this this consequence that doctors will allow or would ease their, uh, their patients in the first place, we know that they will be subjected to this torture in the first place because we know that torture is wrong and we do not condone torture. So what say you? Doctors in these institutions have no choice whether they want to save these people or not because they are paid only paid. You have never ever heard of a doctor in Guantanamo Bay be paid to let a victim die, right? Yeah. These people, doctors, now have a choice in the general public whether or not to participate in one of way. And we believe as a government, we should take away that choice so doctors cannot participate in the in itself by prolonging the torture. We talk about how people have to tell the short of their own lives and that people have the right to decide the ending to their life. But we on the government side believe that we better serve this purpose by preserving the dignity that people have. Because if one the right to die with dignity rather than continue capture, being stripped naked, electrocuted, and beaten, <coughs> rather die than that is dying with dignity. And therefore, under our side, we believe that calling the shots on your life is better preserved under our side. Now, we want my point torture, torture is a bad thing. Both sides agree to that. Now, under our paradigm, torture is reduced. Because torture is dissuaded now. Because when you cannot carry out prolonged torture and the victim dies, you have to, the torture end rather than the victim being kept alive and the torture continuing. On the outside, torture saves lives. Because people are detained in that and part of it is to actually reduce the amount of suffering that these people detain undergo. Now, both sides seek to look after the victims of torture. Now, under our paradigm, we believe that we look after them better because A, these people are not suffering. Life, right, life is not measured in terms of quantity, like what we try to say. Life is measured in quality. And we would rather have a shorter life, our victim have a shorter life with a higher amount of quality and minimize the person's suffering than having a long life of misery where he's repeatedly tortured indefinitely without knowing when he will end. We talk about how torture is bad and it does not serve its original purpose and we agree with that. We talk about how torture victims when they are released after an indefinite amount of time which is in itself unlikely can return to their home country so, Afghanistan and talk about how kind we were to them. But we see, right, which is more likely, you telling people that you were saved or telling the true version of what the victims are actually experiencing, which is, I had no choice whether I wanted to live or die. The doctors forced me to live so I could be tortured even more. And then I, now they have, they have obviously failed to prove that this victim is going to live with a positive perception of country. 
because this victim will spread more negative perceptions of the country. Why do groups such as ISIS exist? Why do groups such as Al Qaeda exist? They exist because of a profound hatred towards America. And they exist because of profound hatred towards the way America does things. Now, on the outside, we believe that by reducing the amount of torture, by reducing its the time torture is carried out, by extending torture, that we can reduce this negative perception. Because on the outside, these torture victims, at least they get to die with dignity, they get to die, no, they get to die with a minimal amount of suffering or less suffering than under their paradigm, which is the victim is forced to live against his will because the victim is uh, the victim is tortured indefinitely, so he's forced to live against his will and he's forced to suffer indefinitely just for the sake of information, which is probably inaccurate because of the multiple concussions suffered as they have mentioned. And with that, I am proud of course. Shorten the torture 
experience because of the existence of this consultation between the doctor and the patient. As I said, I'm going to talk about how this, uh, how compassion becomes a positive vector of the West instead. Now, before I want, you talk about saving uh, victims that are near them. They may be near them. They are tortured, knew that there will be no doctor present to save them, should it go wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Firstly, yeah. won't the doctors be cautious if they were not doctors? Uh, firstly, is that wardens are not people with medical degrees. They may know where to work that a certain order for this talk, but you can see how people put it inside the so area that I didn't know that they might be bad. So the woman decides to part let a person speak, does not realize that as you respond to a person being weak die in the process, the other still do not know when exactly he is there and what point he is able to touch or not. So different people have different form of importance. So the example is rather than having this stop torture, but go to other red flag methods instead. What would happen is that you take an inland inmate who is able and torture him in front of the person they want to get into the cross in order to get something they don't need. It's even worse because the other person is and the government doesn't get in the person's back. So, what it means is that it's actually advocating for the behavior. The person who is not guilty, the person who is innocent, is trying for them to be killed in order to actually get the patient in the first place. The opposition makes it even worse when it comes to torture. Let's move on to the first argument. The doctors are able to excite their own discussion. Firstly, we have to understand, like I said, the doctors do not have medical degree. They listen to what the doctor said, but also what them are these people are allowed to go into solitary confinement or they actually send to the back room instead. Now, if doctors are able to actually consult with these patients and he believes in the idea that torture is wrong and he goes against that rhetoric, uh, he goes for that rhetoric instead, this way doctors are able to prolong his stay within the ward or probably give him extra killers in order for him to actually survive through the process. If he's going through sleep deprivation, Doctors can even give ad hoc to that person so that he can survive throughout the process instead. The good thing about this is that it allows the doctor to actually somehow uh, inhibit the effects of torture while at the same time preserving that person's life. He's able to use that discretion over the warden to actually reduce the amount of torture that exists. What happens here is that doctors who are, co who are completely stripped of their degrees and decide not to work within the CIA no longer have the ability to actually exercise their discretion in order to reduce the pain that these people go through. So what we're causing here practically is to allow wardens to torture another person without having the ability to subscribe painkillers or adderall so that they can survive in the process and in the long run they have to see their families at the end of the day sit down. Now, doctors also at the same time are able to actually control what gets the patients are able actually to actually leave the wards in the first place. It is that if they're not actually leave the wards, then the doctors are able to control what you basically are being tortured. Though we agree that at some point the wardens would actually ask what happens, but at least the doctors are able to use the discretion within their period, which is non existent within that. The conclusion here is that doctors hold a huge power over the uh, over the wardens. And if they believe that torture is wrong, that means they're able to control the amount of torture that the person goes through at the same time, preserving their lives so that they can actually go through a due process in the future. But second of all, is that confession becomes a kind of positive thing for the government. Because what happens in Uganda treatment? That means there is a perception within the East that everyone in the West, even though they have the capacity to say are also evil because they rather see you die rather than living instead. What happens here is that when your family members listen to the stories of what happens in Guantanamo Bay, this is the one that gets perpetuated and becomes the rhetoric of the Taliban that the West has the capabilities but does not want to save you at all. At least on our side, when these people go back home and they're able to actually sue the, government, the American government and get compensation out of it, they're able to see that no one, not everyone within the West are totally evil who wants to get rid of all the Muslims in the world, but they also perceive that there are some people who are good in the West and these doctors are the good ones Yet you're stripping them of their degrees. It's a shame they need to serve the community. Okay. <laughs> It's all about setting up that we're in the right now.
and see more of studying when an acquisition here is trying to tell you to prolong the life of these goods so you can get even more for it for a longer period of time because this is what is going to happen. But it will read to you later. Now, <clears throat> if all the cluster is a bad thing, and what we're trying to with is to assume that, okay, we're giving them doctors and giving them chances to heal so they can go home and tell the family that they are uh, that they are people in they are not problems there are no problems solving the problem of torture that is what she is going to be today because we need to remember that okay we are talking about torture being a bad thing torture being a problem that needs to be solved what we're trying to do here is we're trying to tell you to take away these doctors discretion we're not giving the doctors but uh, the choice to choose whether or not the person is going to die or not because ultimately it's not the doctor's choice. The doctors have been victimized under their paradigm because doctors have to choose. Doctors don't get to choose at all if they deserve to be on getting tortured or whether the victim deserve to die. Now, which is more likely? You are, imagine that you are a victim being tortured daily, every day. Whether or not you are an actual, an actual terrorist or um, like they say, um, uh, what frequency is the torture a waste to every single day you will die? Whenever you end up on a hospital bed, even if you know that the doctor is there to save you, you just you hate it because the fact of the matter is this doctor is preventing from preventing you from escape the torture that you are facing every single day, every moment you wait. Because when you are healed, you can give away more chances. You prolong the prolong process of the is this what you want today? I I believe that no culture wants anyone to get put your name together. Yeah. This debate is not about forcing medication. This debate is about whether doctors have the ability to visit patients or not and give any more for the patient. Now, this answer, are you directly denying any form of medication towards a person even though he requests Okay. Entertain it for a while, okay? Because at the end of the day, we are to end torture. We're not trying to decide whether or not the doctors have the discretion to decide whether a person has to live or not. Because, first of all, we believe that the doctors should not have to have the choice to decide whether they go against their own ethics to allow a person to get hurt before for a long time. Because in the case of the doctors, Ultimately, in the end, doctors are victimized under their paradigm. There are three things, that, three things that we are going to do, right? The um, how we are being tortured, the sanctity of life, and how is the government better? Uh, how is the government better reducing and ending and really ending the other torture? We are taking away the incentive to keep beating the people, to torturing people, on the torture process, so that, well, in in the shorter term, more bodies will end up. And what's going to happen is people are going to start to question why, why there are so many deaths. Why, what is happening in these this places? What is happening in the water? What are people doing it? They're being tortured. People, people understand that these places, that that the USA is really torturing <coughs> And, and that something we, and something needs to be done about that. We are arguing that the quality of life is also better than the quantity of life. If you believe we argue that okay, there's this chance that these people will get better and they will go home and tell their and tell their family that oh person they at least let me they at least let me live. But the point of it, but <clears throat> the fact of the matter is people who are being tortured do not they do not see the chance of escape. People who are terrorists, people who are locked in Guatemala, okay, most of them here, they do not see the light of day in the end. Because they are being because they are being tortured all the way, <clears throat> because they are tortured to death. And this is why we believe that that we believe that to protect the safety of life, we have to tell people that it's not okay to torture, that it's not okay for doctors to decide whether or not a person is the doctor's first for to heal the person so that the person can live and get tortured another day. <clears throat> and the third, the protection of the protection of the doctors and victims, correct? Who is protecting the doctors and victims want to not be for that? 
end goal of preventing process keeps me for a long time. In this case, they were after once you prevented that doctor was Are you okay with letting that bill die? Are you okay with letting that doctor stay alive? What kind of life do you want? Do you want a life that is full of pain and torture and no way out? Or would you want to live a life that is full of pain? But what we're doing here is giving them mercy. The kind of compassion that we're doing here is we are not in for the one anymore. We're taking a step to stopping towards reducing torture and stopping torture. And what is the opposition doing? They're doing nothing. And now to, to the third clash, the protection of, of the doctors and victims. Although in our country, the doctors have no choice, but this is a good thing because eventually we do force the doctors to go against their code of ethics. What is their code of ethics? We teach you that it's do no harm. But, right, you see a person, but usually what kind of person, what kind of life is that person? In the poor torture victim, by letting them live, you are letting the warden keep them again and again and again. Is that, that is, and that is against the whole conduct for the doctors. If we believe that I offer an opportunity to the doctors in the market, who will take the victim better? Therefore, in, in their part, believe that, okay, allowing the victims to live, they are compassionate. But the fact of the matter is, when the victims live, they get tortured. Over and over again. So, in a, so it is obvious that the government does a better job in being the victims at the end of the day. This is why I we are proud to win today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Doctors have to forgo their real purpose of their that is to save the people, people in the first place in order to stop the suffering of these so called people who, without giving them any kind of medication, is strong, right? So, I'm going to clarify certain things in this debate for you. First, torture is only illegal in countries, right? We don't see anyone actually condoning the act, the act of torture, even though it does happen in isolated cases, but it doesn't mean that torture is legalized or that. People are agreeing to the fact that you are torturing people. And secondly, this debate is not about forcing medication on the tortured victims, rather allowing these victims to have choices whether or not to preserve their sanctity of life. This is not in so for, for these people, if they want to have this medication, allow them to have this, regardless or not whatever the consequences that might take place, because these people at least have faith in order for them to pursue their life because they think their life later on will be meaningful. So thirdly, we say that the doctors should be there in order to cater towards the health the healthcare needs of these people. And we say that it's very unfair for you to obstruct the existence of doctors in the first place because you are scaring them off by taking off their medical licenses if they are to be there to assist these victims in the first place. I have two issues to talk to you about in this debate, right? Firstly, is it really morally just at the set to treat to not treat these people? And secondly, how does government will hinder the advancement of public justice if they strip away the medical licenses uh, by not helping this um torture victims in the first place? But let's move on to the first issue. That is whether or not it is morally justified to treat these people, right? Because they're trying to um affirm the stance that is you want to preserve the dignity of these victims in the first place. Because of that as well, these people will be less likely to be tortured because now they get to die. So how exactly is that fair for these people? Because they don't because the problem with this, with this I with this logic, this way of being taught in the first place, because you need to understand that these victims are the victims of these circumstances circumstances, right? There's no there's 
there's not a word or any trial or any court um, of their victim saying that these people are in, innocent in the uh, arguing for whether or not they are wrong in the first place. Right? I do not know whether that's why these people actually resort to torturing these people yeah. because they see they want to get information, right? By means by by these illegal means. But these people are victims of circumstances. Now when you let these people die without any medication or any treatment from the doctors, you are actually obstructing doctors from forming their duties and at the same time from obstructing people from being able to actually come actually tell the world what happened to them later on if they get released, right? Because now there's no Charge. There's no slight way of hope at all for these people to actually approach the public, see if they get released after the torture, in um as to what ex what's actually what kind of scenario that is actually released within uh, uh within a torture session with the wardens in the first place, right? And also it's good for these people to die immediately because now they get released. But it is wrong, right? Because what happens after you get tortured is that you get a slow and painful death. You get questions from all these three teams the kicking on your screen. So how do you mean that these people get to die in dignity? Well actually you don't they don't actually die in dignity. In fact, what's gonna happen is that they're just gonna win for it in a dark corner of a small cell yeah, yeah. with all those infections all over their body because they get untreated. And that's what they are supporting, right? We are not saying that torture is 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 good, right? Because we already uh, we, we disagree with the kind of way they are trying to push on at least we are actually supporting these people to get the torture furthermore. Because when torture has been legalized and when these people are sent to drug this should be should have them, or the kind of the risk of the abuses because of the torture and this can be reported and the public gets to know and that's how you try and centralize the issue in the first place and it gets to get attention and that's how you can uh, put accountability on these people in the first place because now you have to go anywhere because now their secrets have out and you and now how the reporting will be done and media will give enough attention and how the things justice will be served in the end of the day right but before that yes sir would this question exist in the of paradigm if these doctors they have to treat a victim of torture because they have to save their life job or they are even if it's against the will of the code of conduct? Okay, the thing is they will always have to do good, right? If the patient actually asks you to tell them, you help them. You don't just simply disregard the fact because they see that under their paradigm is that they're being compassionate to the victim by protecting these people from getting tortured furthermore. But I've already spoken in our case on how this actually will help people and under their case that this the voices of these people will actually get obstructed or they won't even get the um a chance to actually put out their opinion and help their side of the story and that's why it's very unfair and it's not really justified at all to let these people die like that. It's such a shame that they're a kind of thing, right? It's like they bring a penalty but in, in a much more speed, like as you guys do it. But now let's move on to this second issue on how these actions of the government by stripping out, stripping away the medicalities of these drugs that will hinder the advancement of investments, right? Because first, when people die, you're not their innocence at all, right? You know their level of innocence, whether they actually have committed or they are actually using various organizations, you know all these things. Because all you do is that you torture these people, and that's why torture is wrong in the first place. So now, when you torture these people, until they are unable to come up, with their, uh, their own, uh, not their own opinion, their own words of truth. You're actually obstructing these people from trying to tell you the truth in the first place. So these voices will become lost um, in the first place because of the lack of processes that Terence has talked to you about, right? How this will actually happen because these victims might be able to be held in court during the due process of the trial as witnesses and as witnesses to testify against whatever kind of um, injustice that has been done to them. So if you let them die and by not uh, by by not allowing this to attend in the first place, how will these people be able to actually tell their side of the story, right? And you see that a lot of that will arouse this people. This is what we've told you, right? But we see that that's not going to happen, right? In the first place, because a lot of these kind of cases are usually very isolated because the government doesn't want people to, uh, to know what they're doing. But they're hiding behind all this um, misinformation by uh, by not telling people about what's happening in the media. But we see that this is wrong. So that's why we want these people to help this 
victims in the first place so they get to go out later on when they are released and tell the doctors because doctors are the ones who know what's best for their patient and that's why we should give these choices to the doctors not make the doctors become judge exclusion in the debate and that i've never been really proud of it. thank you This debate assumes that torture is already looked down by the government. That's why we have the CIK black books being opened up. Fortunately, the CIK is an autonomous body that works away from the government, that works independent from what the government actually decrees. Now, side government this debate, this is debate on several other levels. This debate is not about forcing medication onto a detainee, but this debate is about a scenario where a detainee wants to go home and thinks he can survive. The question becomes, should a doctor assist his position so that he can survive, goes back to his family, and probably sue the government in the long run? Or have them brought in jail, which is probably the opposite of the dignity that they want to actually preserve. That means your carcass will be left untreated and you are still bleeding in the process when you reach to heaven. But the third assumption that we hear is that there is no way out. These people, when they survive these tortures, the doctors help them out, there is no possibility of them going back, which is false. That's why the CIA black books has been opened up, and that's why we have this debate in the first place. There's also a reason why I said earlier on that places like Abu Ghraib closed down, and there's a push to close down, close down one kind of obey. That means if a person survives, he still has the ability to sue the American government for false imprisonment and negligence and is able to get compensation in the process. Considering that people can see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, should the doctor assist that person to achieve that goal instead, especially when you detention without trial? There are two issues in this debate. Which policy provides quality of life? And second of all, what happens when doctors suddenly stop medication? Now, firstly, which one provides the quality of life? Their main contention here is that this is similar to euthanasia. But the difference here is that, at least in euthanasia, you ask the consent of the person whether they want to survive or not. Our policy allows the doctor to consult whether that person wants to receive medication within the process. That means you actually follow the Hippocratic law. You are doing the opposite of it by allowing the doctor to become judge, jury, executioner, and becoming agents of death practically estimating person who have not even gone through the court process. Second of all, the ability to consult between the doctor and the patient allows the doctor to also control the, uh, uh, control the, uh, the intervention process. That means if that person needs to survive, the doctor can always prescribe painkillers or the agrols to that person. But thirdly, is that our policy allows due process. Because you have to understand, Guantanamo Bay exists in the process where you do not have any formal trial. It's similar to the ISA or quota in Malaysia, where these people do not go through a court system. That means there is a possibility that a random man in Pakistan or a random man in Afghanistan gets picked up by the US military just based on suspicion or just being friends with people in Al Qaeda. With people in Al -Qaeda. And these people are the ones who get sent to Guantanamo Bay. They allow these people to die in jail, a person who has not been proven whether he's guilty or not. Considering the fact that we are already moving towards a process where we try to open up the system, this person, at least under our policy, can sue the government and actually prove himself in court when he survives the process that he is not guilty, but he is innocent. And only our policy allows that because everyone in the process dies. But second of all, what happens when all doctors stop medication? Their main contention is that, oh, torture is going to end. Such a simple Teletubbies ending on their side there. Now, we don't think that torture will actually end, but instead, they will try to gauge information through other methods by beating up another person who they are deemed, who are deemed expendable in the first place. Why is this even worse? Because if a person is already painted as expendable, that means there's a possibility that the government doesn't, the CIA doesn't mind that person dying. So rather than have one person being tortured instead, you have multiple people being tortured in order to get the, the main person they want to get information to feel a sense of guilt in order to achieve this, this kind of information. We are able to use this 
discretion, and this it somehow prohibits or inhibits disorder and just because you take medication does not mean more than you suddenly have medical degrees to figure out whether they can stop torture at a certain point. On our side, we allow compensation and compassion. compassion. Governor Mr. Speaker, a lot of things went wrong in position actually engaging our like speaker. Right? We think that uh, what the, what they're trying to actually create in is like a scenario that actually we need to like a negative victim of torture, which is totally against what we're trying to like present to you that these doctors are actually not really actually engaged with victims of torture. But instead, they are being forced and being banned by the object. That means they are being forced into actually trying to stay there or actually trying to do something like or um, against their moral laws or against their ethics. Right. It's something we think they totally ignore from our side of the house, which is why we still choose to engage with them on the issue of like whether or not doctors want to engage with the team of culture or not. Which is why, we, like, let's look at the whole like that came from their side of the house, right? Because they told us how this will make like how doctors not fresh and this issue to me when it comes to the issue of culture. Right? We told you our response to that. We told you that first, we don't think doctors actually have access. Because they have to do this at least to save whether or not they think they try to save the life of these victims or not, they still have to see them because they have a job. And then secondly, right, when they told us like how like doctors will not be like compassionate to save life, and we tell them that is not true. Right? Like when doctors actually people don't actually to save the life of everybody, there are actually a lot of ethical things that are involved in their job, whether or not like the quality of life they're trying to see is worth saving or actually not worth saving. Mm -hmm. Which is why we think the art of it in came in from our position is like if it's okay for the victim like to choose whether or not they want to live or not, they still like let them live. And if they choose to die, we still say it's okay for them to die. And these are the kind of acts that are actually involved like that actually exist. These are the kind of laws that exist. Actually, especially when it comes to the conduct, conduct and stuff like that. But then, like this whole idea like, just came out from nowhere. Like how this is scared doctors away, right? Like, because we don't think it's true. Because we have actually protected these doctors as against actually making bad decisions or even making any decision at all when it comes to it. But what are the actual like uh, argument that came from our side of the house, which like uh, somewhere actually in this time, right? Because like what we only advocate for in this debate, right? Like, get to is why the medical practitioner uh, as a whole has to take an active stance on the issue of culture, and which is something they totally missed out on their side of the house. We think because we think medical association has actually been active and been a lot of things have actually been going on when it comes to being involved in like issues of culture and things like that. And they've actually tried to dissociate themselves away from this, but still quite not enough. And we think like by doing this, they're actually making track stand as very long to when it's make, when making decisions of culture and things like that. And we give you example of where medical practitioners have actually made active decisions like this, which is the example of death penalty that we told you in our case. Right? And we told you how our side like actually put like, both the doctors are victims. Right? So now these doctors will now not face with this like arbitrary decisions of whether or not what is right or what is wrong. It's now they are only protected by law and things like that to do with from acts like this. Again, like now on victims, right? We told you how this act and that's where how this policy has worked would actually encourage like victims to actually death, uh, protect victims by them now let's be to like like let's be to be like uh, like torture to the point that we call now there are no doctors on ground. If actually information is the first out of the team, we now burdens that we now show more compliance when they are actually torturing of uh, uh, prisoners and things like that. And these are the kind of benefits and advice that we try to put out on the side of the house, which we totally space to engage in because they run away from the debate. I just have to all those are actually want to save the life of the victim of torture. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Good morning, everyone. This is outside.